In the previous video, I demonstrated how we can use Luminar Neo to seamlessly combine photos of different exposures. So we combined the interior exposure with the exterior exposure and we used HDR merge. It wasn't an HDR merge finished shot, but we just used that to give us a little foot up, a bit of leverage. So now in this video, we're gonna take that exposure blended photo and use that as a base layer onto which to build our Luminar Neo edit. So I'll cover correcting geometry, fixing color casts, retouching the photo, making the walls a little whiter and overall just giving our photos just a little bit more pop and impact so let's load luminar neo it's already loaded let's just get into neo and have a look so we've got our exposure blended photo from the previous video now we just need to finish this off so as you can see the layers from the previous version are gone we are now collapsed into a single 16-bit tiff file lovely to work on so we don't have develop raw because it's not a raw file however there is enough information in there now that we've merged those exposures for us to create a really nice edit so the first thing i'd like to do is correct the geometry so we can open up the optics section as a starter and that gives us the ability to fix a pin cushioning and push it towards a barrel distortion or vice versa if we were working on a raw file, obviously Luminar would give us the ability to fix this automatically. But if we're happy with the optics, then we just jump into the transform section. And it's here where you'll find this really useful slider, the vertical slider, because often when we're tilting our camera up or down doing architectural photography, this is a common problem. But if I look at the vertical on the right hand side, which looks nice and true, and then I look at the one on the left, I've actually got a little bit of a tilt here. So it's not actually an issue of correcting my verticals at the moment. It's more a fact that I didn't actually have my camera aligned so I'm going to come into the crop section here click on the outside and that's actually going to allow me to rotate the photo and in this case that's all that needed to happen was a rotation in terms of the overall development of the photo I don't feel like there's too much to do because we work these layers individually before we brought them together with that exposure blending technique I showed in the last video and if you happen to miss that I'll link it in the description so let's deal with some of these color casts one thing I like to do just to identify where the color casts exist is just boost that saturation slider all the way up. And now it's really evident where we're getting a blue cast from the blue light just out of camera shot to the right here. We've got a greeny tinge above that. The walls are looking very yellow. But to be honest, the paint color wasn't neutral. It did have a yellowy beige tint to it. So I don't want to get rid of that. However, being mindful of where these casts are, I can open up the color tool itself and drop down the HSL, which as you know, stands for hue, saturation and luminance. And that is gonna enable me to actually grab the saturation of individual colors and change them. So for example, if I boost the blue up, you can see the sky getting a lovely rich blue. It's also intensifying this blue cast around here. So obviously if we take it in the opposite direction, it's gonna neutralize those blues. That's not what I wanna do outside the window in the sky, but it might be something I want to do on this wall area here. So I'm just gonna bring that effect down and I can see that green toning up there as well. And if you're not sure, just boost the greens up and go, yep, that's exactly what color we're dealing with. And I'm actually gonna take that all the way out because I don't really like that. And there's probably a bit of cyan in that transition zone between the blue and green that normally happens. So I'll bring that down as well. And now I'm just gonna come up and grab a mask and I can just paint that into this area. I'll push that effect to 100, get it done nice and quickly. A little bit was bleeding over the curtain. All right, so here was our before, here was our after. There's a little bit of blue kissing down onto this area here as well. So I'm also gonna paint that blue reduction in just down there as well, but not with full intensity. Now here's my philosophy around color casts. I don't like to remove them completely. And the reason is they exist for a reason, right? Light hits a color within a scene, whether that's the grass on the floor and then bounces up, reflects into the room, or the light might be hitting a colored duvet cover and that will then bounce off of that and onto the ceiling. And so if you get rid of it completely, things start to look a little bit fake. So I like to go with the Goldilocks principle where we're not removing it completely, we're just reducing it to a point where everything's just right. And that's what we're gonna do here. So I can also see that we're getting a little bit of blue kicked up onto the duvet here. So again, I'm just gonna reduce it. By having the brush set to something low, like 38%, I'm able to just build up this desaturation effect up in passes. And if I'm happy with controlling the blues, and I can check that by toggling this off and on. So here's our before, and here was our after, and I'm happy. I just close that down, and then if there's other areas I need to deal to, 
I can do that as well. So as I said before, we can grab the saturation slider, crank it up just so that we can better visualize where these areas of discoloration are. And I can see in the top left, there's a lot of that yellowy green going on. So I'm just gonna grab the yellow saturation slider and just reduce that. What about the orange? There's a little bit of orange going on, so I'll just reduce that a little bit, and I'll just grab the green slider, play with that, and as I toggle that all the way to the right, you can see that it is influencing a color cast up here as well. So I'm just gonna reduce that, but not quite as much. Now I can double click the saturation slider just to reset that have a little look at before and after and just assess the room assess the color casts just keeping my eye on it and deciding okay how much of that do i want to remove and once i've got a rough idea i can just come in and paint that effect where i want it and i can double up in that corner where it was a little stronger and the same up there and just do a little toggle of before and after with that color cast here was our before here was our after now, while we're talking about color casts, I've actually got a really cool thing to share with you guys. Luminar Neo and Luminar AI before have a really unique tool for dealing with this problem. It wasn't designed for it, but I found a kind of workaround that is really good for whitening up walls that have color casts. So let me show you. You wanna come into the creative section. So if that's not open, you just click on the creative section here and come down to dramatic. Uh, didn't expect that, did you? And we're gonna grab the amount slider and push that all the way to 100. Oh wow, doesn't that look amazing? No, absolutely not. There are some other adjustments that we need to make as well. So obviously we wanna keep our amount nice and high as I recommend when you're dealing with a lot of tools inside of Luminar. Push the amount all the way so that you can see exactly what your changes are doing to the tool. So local contrast, for example. If I push that to 100, that's really not what we want. But as I drop that back down to zero, and toggle our before and after. We're not introducing those blacks and shadows that we were before, we're just sort of brightening up the walls. But it's still not quite right because if I toggle our before and our after, and we look at the blue sky outside, the green tree, everything's just getting a little desaturated. So no problem, we're gonna come into the brightness and saturation section here, and you can see that the default for saturation is minus 25. So we just wanna bring that back so it's sat at zero. Now when I toggle our before and after, the saturation of those colors isn't actually being affected. It may appear that it is, but that is just a consequence of the brightness going up. So as our luminance, our brightness value increases, the apparent value of the saturation can just drop away. So we need to be mindful of that. You can see as I drop the brightness down, we get all our blue and our green back. So perhaps we just wanna push the saturation just a little higher and we're gonna put the brightness somewhere around 40 and let's have a quick toggle of before and after, before and after, okay. And now we've got the settings of the dramatic tool where we want, we can just drop the amount, right? Well, that is one way to deal with it. We could just bring the amount slider down until we kind of feel, oh yeah, that looks pretty good. But what I prefer to do is come in with a brush with a low strength so that I can just paint this effect in just where I want it. And we can do that really quickly. Let me show you. So rather than grabbing that amount slider and just bringing that down to a point where you feel it looks much better, and for sure that is an option if speed is of the essence, but what I prefer to do is just come into the masking section, grab a brush, a strength of about a third is fine. And now I can pretty roughly just paint over the walls. So with a super quick pass like that, this was our before and this was after. I can bring the size of my brush down just so I can be a little bit more precise. And just toggle out before and after again, before and after. Just brighten up those corners a bit more. So that is a super quick way to deal with walls and ceilings to reduce color casts and simultaneously give them a little brightness bump at the same time. Next, I'm gonna do just a little bit of retouching with the clone tool before we give our image its final little bump. So I'll just close the dramatic tool down and come down to the professional section where the clone tool lives. I wanna clean up this patch on the carpet, so I'm just gonna click here to sample from that part of the carpet, just reduce my brush size a little bit, click and paint over, a nice easy fix. Now I'm gonna zoom in to these windows here where we've got a bit of water staining and I'm just gonna borrow from a clean area here by holding the Alt key and then clicking on this edge and I'm gonna move over here and that's gonna allow me to match the geometry. So I'm gonna line this up, click once and then I can just paint up and that removes that part there. And I can do the same, just working my way up like this. 
now I've retouched a larger section here, cleaning up this part here is going to be nice and easy. So I'm just going to sample from this area here, again, line that up with the framework, click once, and now I can just start painting over the top of that water stain. Make sure I don't go over the curtain there. I really don't need to be too precise with that. Sure, I could have gone further up into the corner there, but just for the sake of speed in this video, that'll do. Let's look at our before and our after for that, before and after. Now, unfortunately, just being a bit of an older home, we've got areas that don't look the best, and I can come in and clean those up with a clone tool. Alternatively, we can jump into the essentials section, come to the erase tool, and just come and mark those dots. Literally anything that we want to remove. Click erase and then let Luminar Neo's AI handle it for us, which is a nice approach, and we could do that for the whole photo if we want to but I'm not gonna trouble myself with that. But one thing you can do if you like having a really nice clean image and you're particularly attentive to details, what you can do is come in and actually minimize things like this shadow line here. And the best tool for doing that, again, is the clone tool. And this time, rather than painting with a strength of 100 to completely remove something, what I like to do is just build the effect up because the area that we're borrowing from may have a different brightness value to where we're painting over and that can really start to show up if you're not careful. Like my sample point wasn't good there so we can actually see the edge of the photo where I've borrowed from the top part of the ceiling and painted it there. So that's no good. I could just press Ctrl Z to undo it but I'm going to paint it away. And you just want to be careful that you don't start kind of undoing all your hard work like I was there. So it's subtle, but if I show you the before, we can definitely see a shadow line going across the ceiling. And now I'll show you our after, after we've done a bit of cloning. So before with the shadow line and after much smoother. So now if we're happy with that first step of fixing and correcting the photo in terms of color casts and any anomalies in the scene where we've cloned them out, retouched them, now we can get into the final stage, which is just adding a little bit of spice and more impact to our image. And it's gonna be all slider based because the base of the photo and that correction is already done. So this bit's gonna be really easy, but it's gonna add a nice bit of impact to our photo. Incidentally, if you don't have Luminar Neo and you think it would be a good fit for your photo editing, I've got a link in the description below and I'd really appreciate if you'd use that because I get a small commission it just helps me keep creating this free content for you guys so thank you if you do that so how far you take your finishing inside Luminar Neo is entirely up to your style and your aesthetic preferences however there are some really great tools that we can leverage so Enhance AI is one of them you know it can really help us out with our interiors However, one thing you need to watch out for is this haloing effect that can start to happen. But that's an easy fix. We can either reduce the overall amount to a point where we feel like it's not really affecting that at all, or an alternative is just to grab a mask, come into the brush mode, and just erase the effect from the areas where it's introducing that halo. And we can just dial the effect back as well from other areas where we just don't want the effect so strongly. Another really useful tool for dealing with architecture and interior photography as well is the Structure AI tool. And as I push that all the way on, you can see it's far too much. However, you can certainly see how it can enhance the details. So obviously, I don't recommend that we put that on anywhere near 100%. It's one of those tools where a little can go a long way. And again, we have the ability just to brush it in only where we want that effect. So in this back corner, it was looking quite nice. Let's say you wanted to add a bit more detail around the frame itself. With a lower strength, you might just want to help bring attention to the center of the frame. During the initial steps that we covered in that first video that I'll link to in the description below, we didn't actually do any sharpening. So I'd recommend zooming into 100%, play with the sharpness slider, and just set that to a point that you feel it looks good without introducing unwanted haloing. So let's have a look. Here's our before and thereafter. We'll zoom into another area of detail. Here was our before and release it for our after, before and after, not bad. We could also put in a bit of the small, medium and large details, but as I crank these all the way to 100 so we can see exactly what it's doing, it becomes evident that if we do put in any of this effect, we want to do it really minimally because it's a pretty, pretty extreme effect. But look, here is our before, 
Here's our after again, a little going a long way. And as is often the case when I'm filming videos, I might have overcooked this one just a little bit. So perhaps dial that back just a little bit. However, if you do start to introduce a lot more in the way of details and structure into your photo, yeah, of course you can drop the amount back on those tools. However, I've got another alternative approach that I like to sprinkle into all of my photos and architecture is no different. Let me show you my finishing final tool that I like to put in my work. You don't have to, but it's my thing. You know it's my thing. So I'm going to close that down. I'm going to jump into the creative section. And of course, it is the mystical filter. OK, here we go. I'm going to crank this all the way to 100 so we can see exactly what's going on. And you can see it's adding this kind of softening, dreamy kind of look from this, turning it into this. Of course, it's way too much. What about if we brighten the shadows up? Don't want to go that extreme. What about if we make it a little more smoother so that the transition of the effect isn't as extreme and it blends just a little bit more softly through the photo? OK, now we've got a kind of dreamy glow that's just softened off those more hard architectural elements. And we just want to bring this effect down to an amount where we think, OK, yeah, that's all right. And now what about 15? Here's our before, here's our after. Much more subtle before and after. And I am just going to jump back into the edits and reduce that accent AI slider just a little bit. And that, my friends, is how I might use Luminar Neo to process an architectural interior, real estate interior from this, turn it into this. So to get the full sense of what we've been able to achieve through Luminar Neo, let's look at our very original file. That's this one here. And then we created an exposure blended version in the previous video. We then used that photo as a base to create this final version. So we've gone from our original raw photo to this, our before and our after. If you missed the first part of this real estate editing video, you can go and check that video out right there. That will show you how to blend those exposures into one seamless file. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Hope this has been useful. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.